Chicken is normally not transparent, so you can't see this secret message of place behind it. But with this orange solution, it will slowly turn clear so you can read through it. I then test it on my skin and eventually even my eye, because I want to become the invisible man. This all started when I came across this YouTube video titled Incredible Discovery Makes Skin Invisible by Using Yellow Dye. It just sounds too good to be true. It basically says that yellow food colouring number 5, otherwise known as tartrazine, commonly used in Doritos to make them orange, was used to make lab my skin transparent. It's just rubbed into the belly, just straight up, just, just rub it into the belly and then it just turns clear, like it's that simple. If this is real, it could vastly improve the medical industry because you can see your insides without having to use an x-ray or like some scanning device thing that could potentially harm your body. Now you may already know what this says because I posted this like nine months ago in a short form video, but I didn't go into much depth about it and there's since been some controversy regarding the claims that they made in the original paper I followed. People weren't able to replicate their results. And that's a big problem. Let me just sum up a bit of the beef that happened here. So we have the original paper over here, and we have the recreation over here. And these guys claimed that the transparency just didn't work in live tissues. So they go on Twitter and say, hey, this doesn't actually work. They follow up and say, if it was to work, you'd have to basically destroy the tissue a bit, which means it's not really living tissue, is it? They said you'd have to break the skin barrier. That's not the kind of thing that this paper was talking about doing. And so these guys replied with, hey, actually, you didn't follow our paper correctly, and this is why. And they quoted this part of the paper that isn't actually in the paper. I can't find this quote anywhere, and well, this is figure seven, which isn't even to do with making the stomach transparent, so it seems like a bit of an over-exaggeration to put in extra details. They also quoted this other fact, which I have to give them credit to. They used different ages of mice. I mean, yeah, if you're not gonna follow the original paper, then of course your results might be a bit different. So I don't know who's right or wrong anymore. They're kind of both right and wrong. But in the end, this guy gave in and decided to remove or withdraw his paper. But what's relevant to us in this video is that they also claimed it doesn't work on freshly cut muscle tissue, which you might have expected the original publishers of the research to say, um, actually, the US National Science Foundation did their own study, but apparently their experiment proves you can get it to work in freshly cut chicken breast. Not only that, but it seems like a tutorial that I can follow. It's actually one of the simplest preparations I've ever seen. And just with a Google search away, it turns out I can just buy Tartrazine online. So that's how I got Tartrazine and was able to try this. But to get an idea of what kind of results I should expect, I looked further into their article. And I wasn't really impressed with how they exaggerated things. Researchers have developed a groundbreaking way to make skin invisible. It combined- You may not have catched that. You see, this skin turned invisible. If you can't read that it clearly says NSF, then you just have a vision impairment. And it, it took me a few times looking at this to realize this isn't even a real time lapse. Did anyone else notice that during the first 20 minutes of that time lapse, nothing changed? That's because this is just three photos with a few fading transitions between them all. So to say at this time it looked like this and at this time it looked like this is a bit disingenuous because, well, they're the same picture. And I thought Mark Rober was the only person in the STEM field faking their photos. For example, this daisy statue is not that large, it's a tiny little thing in Tokyo, except it's just flipped the other way around. And that's not the only part of this image that's a bit suspicious too. It really makes you wonder what is real. People are just editing things in all sorts of ways they want to convey some kind of story that just isn't entirely true. I mean, stretching the truth is a cheap trick that YouTubers do all the time, but I feel like it's a bit different when a government organization starts doing it, or people who brand themselves as reputable and more knowledgeable than the average person does it too. My point is, is that when you stretch the truth and you're making mistakes on top of that, it just makes you a lot less reputable as a source of information. And you'll see later in this video that the more you look into NSF, you'll begin to notice a lot more issues. Like saying researchers have made skin invisible, and then showing the muscle tissue results from their demo without actually specifying that that's not skin. It's just cut chicken breast. I do feel a little bit hypocritical because I make thumbnails that kind of stretch the truth a bit, but I think it is a bit different because in a thumbnail, they're mostly representing an idea, which you then click on and find out what the idea really looks like. I guess it's kind of like movie 
posters that look a little bit different than the actual movie. Whereas this, it seems like they don't want you to know. It kind of just blurs the lines between what's true and what's just there for engagement. And this isn't just some random research. This is by Stanford and it's been funded by multiple big guys. So I looked deeper into this and found a bunch of other articles exaggerating their claims way further than the government organization one did. For example, the Scientific American that claims their skin is almost as transparent as glass. And Forbes is joining in too. How scientists made mice transparent. I mean, it sounds like the mouse is just like, like this one. Oh wait, it's generated by AI. Thanks for being transparent with me. It doesn't really look like glass, does it? No, that just looks kind of gross. Bit of a red flag. So this brought me into a situation where I don't know what's gonna happen when I try this. Is it gonna look like that disappointing video when I do it with the chicken breast? And what happens if I put it on my skin? Is it gonna look like that animated illustration? It's said in the article not to experiment on yourself. If people are literally eating this dye, then I, I don't see why there would be such a problem. There is some safety concerns around it, like ingesting it to try to get my entire body to turn invisible. Talking about food dyes, the colorful drink company with many suggestive anime girls known as Gamersops recently gave me one of their April Fool's joke products called Red 40, named after the controversial food coloring. I gave it a shot. My last stream I was drinking it. I didn't show it on stream. I just kind of drank it because I needed caffeine and an energy boost. But yeah, um, I like it. It's sweet. If you didn't know, they also just started making cans. That's probably gonna get sold out quickly after uploading this video, so check out their other range of energy drinks too. Now they've told me if I help sell enough of these energy drinks using the link in the description, then we might get a custom Mr. Green Guy design drink just like they've done with Charlie here. So if anyone wants to help get a bromine edition drink or something similar in the future, and if you like energy drinks that have zero sugar but still sweet, then use code GREENENERGY at checkout for 10% off and to get closer to that goal. Back to the video. So with all of that necessary context out of the way, this is how it went for me nine months ago. And let's just say there were a lot more flaws and issues than I expected going into this. I guess we're just gonna try it today and see what happens. But first I wanna try this on chicken before I put it on myself. So let me follow this experiment method. I could immediately tell there was something wrong with their instructions. They're asking me to dissolve 105 grams of the dye in 300 milliliters of water. That equates to about 35 grams per 100 mils. Wikipedia says you can only dissolve 20 grams per 100 milliliters of water. And then I found another source saying 26 grams for 30 degrees Celsius. So that's not possible. That doesn't that doesn't follow the <laughs> solubility of it. So I'm not going to end up with a clear solution. Oh, hell no, man. I guess we'll find out, but. I, I have some doubts. So this is already looking kind of bad. And just to be clear, it doesn't say I need to heat it up to make it dissolve more. It just says mix the granules in until they dissolve. But I don't know, it's published by a government agency. Maybe they know what they're talking about. Wait, what's that? They measured in cups. They're treating this like a cooking tutorial? Again, I thought we weren't gonna be eating the dye because because you might die. You see, tartrazine is a little over two times heavier than water. Meaning if you filled a full cup with tartrazine, Tartrazine, it should be 16 ounces because one cup of water is eight. So just double that, 16. They got 3.69, so there's something definitely wrong here. What I'm guessing they've done is they've measured a cup using granules, which granules, you know, it's gonna have a bunch of air pockets and spaces in there. So let's see, how much of their dye was air and filler versus actual tartrazine? 21% of what they weighed out was actually tartrazine. What the fuck was the other stuff? Was it actually just 80% air? I don't I don't actually know. This is this is actually kind of stumped me a bit. Let me know your opinions, but we're gonna just do it the exact same way that they said we should, because that's science. Wearing a mask, add one cup of the yellow number five granules to the jar. Oh. 105 grams. Pour one and one fifth cups of water, 300 milliliters into the jar. Stir gently until the granules are dissolved. The liquid should become red slash orange in color. Tape the printout to the light table surface and then center the glass dish over the image on the printout. With gloves on, place the chicken in the dish to cover the image on the printout. Slowly pour all the solution into the dish to completely submerge the chicken in the liquid. It's been nine months since I've seen this clip and just editing this I just realized, oh my god, <laughs> it's just caking it in tartrazine. It's making it so much darker. You can't see through it at all. Well, I can't even see through anymore though. So what's the point? 
And now I just gotta let it sit for an hour or two. I I, stu I stuck through it though. I stuck through it. I decided <laughs> to do this anyway. You always gotta follow the instructions. Allow it to sit for at least one hour with the lunch table turned off. Chicken should be completely submerged in solution. The chicken should now be transparent. Turn the light table on to aid in viewing the image below the chicken. And over time, you should be able to see the image reveal itself. It's become like just a really chunky mix. Uh... This is exactly what I thought would happen, where it just coagulates and becomes a powder because there's not enough water to dissolve 105 grams of tartrazine. And this is what they're using to back up their claims that it actually works. I can see why people are having some difficulties recreating this. Just to be clear, this method isn't from the Stanford University researchers. This is from one of their funders, but they're backing each other up here. So I'm just gonna treat them as the same. The liquid should become red slash orange in color, which is exactly what this looks like when you add more water to it. It. And it shows a little diagram of the chicken being visible under the liquid. So I've added more water I've added it to a little Petri dish because the, the plastic is a lot thinner So it should get closer to the text that I've put underneath it the little hidden message and yeah I've just added a new piece of chicken in and we'll see how that goes This isn't right <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what happened here. It's just like absorbed the water and it's like a cement paste Having it turn into this weird cement might explain why the method had such a weird measurement of tartrazine. We both probably have commercial impure products with binders and fillers in the mix messing with results. So while waiting for the chicken to turn clear, I tested the tartrazine by weighing out 35 grams and seeing just how much water it really takes to dissolve it all. Based on Wikipedia's results, it should have required around 175 milliliters of water if it was pure tartrazine. Mine required 310 milliliters of water. That was at 20 degrees Celsius, so there's probably something else in my tartrazine not listed on the site or container. Unfortunately, I can't do much about it though. So let's see how the chicken went. The, right table, the light table is not even on and I can kind of already see it. Oh, no way. You can see that, you can see the message now, that is so good. I was quite surprised by how well this worked. You can see by my second to second time lapse that it becomes invisible. Okay, I tried it again with a real time lapse, which I accidentally started halfway through because the chicken was floating. So the results don't show much change unfortunately, unless we compare it to before we oranged it, which definitely looks more opaque. So, is this real? Can I turn my skin clear? Can I, can I... Turn my eyeball clear. <laughs> I guess the best way to describe this is that it looks like jelly if it had muscle tissue in it. Which is interesting because the research paper mentions making hydrogels with the dye using agarose. Which makes it kind of like a jelly. But for some reason I assumed this was to help massage the dye into my skin. So I decided to buy some agarose and test it on myself. Not knowing that this was not for massaging things in. Okay, so I've done some tests on the chicken. I've had the dye on my hand for a bit. It was because I wanted a thumbnail and I wanted to take photos of me holding the chicken. It's just a normal dye. It just kind of stains your skin yellow. It doesn't do anything. So that shows me that I'm definitely not allergic to it. I don't have some kind of anaphylactic reaction or anything. It's a bit hot in the shed here. So let me just show you what my arm looks like right now with the veins. I kind of want to see what this would look like if my arm was transparent. I prepared a new batch half the size, this time with some extra water and some heating. I then added the agarose powder into the Dorito dye doesn't taste like Doritos though. And finally, cooled the mixture down on a bunch of ice. This is basically jelly. I was hoping it would be thinner than this, because I was planning to rub this like a gel onto my skin. But with this obvious issue, I decided to continue forward anyway, because I've put too much money into this already. Might as well see if this works. And you may be wondering, why would I decide to try this on myself? I mean, it's because they just make it look so simple. Like you can just massage this on and within minutes you turn invisible. While that isn't actually what I was expecting, I was hopeful that maybe I could find a way to get it to somewhat sort of work. So I tried my best to massage it in and it definitely wasn't working as well as I hoped. This is after 10 minutes. And this is after 20 minutes. I couldn't see any difference. So I decided to blend it. Oh, it's clumpy. Which actually made it easier to apply. We're 40 minutes in and it doesn't look like it's doing anything at all. I feel kind of ridiculous. The only difference I can say there is with this test is that I heated the mixture up and put some agarose into it. Maybe I wasn't supposed to do that. That's right, you weren't supposed to do that. They used agarose so they could perform a H and E staining test. I don't know what that is or how I missed that, but it has something to do with these pretty pink images of tissues. So let's just pretend I never touched agarose or even mentioned it. So crusty looking. 
I don't like that. So I applied the normal tartrazine solution to my skin for over an hour. That didn't work. So looking at the skin, it didn't seem to absorb in at all, but it did seem to absorb through my thicker skin, but I think that's just dead skin cells sitting there, and dead cells would be a lot easier for dye to get into. What's interesting is that the disputing paper specifically calls this result out. They say it only penetrates the stratum corneum layer, a layer of dead cells which is thickest on your palms and soles of your feet. This means so far our results are agreeing with the withdrawn paper. So I decided to lean into this and do another test. I have this idea where I'm thinking I could get like my torch or something and you know when you put like your finger on it, it glows red? I thought this might be interesting under the dye, as your fingers have a thick layer of dead skin cells. So I wrapped my finger in a paper towel taped down, and applied the tartrazine solution to keep it there. Then I placed a glove on around it to prevent it from evaporating. Perfection. Meanwhile, I wanted to double test. I thought maybe I just need a stronger solvent than water. So I tried mixing it with glycerin and putting that on my skin. That didn't really do anything. And the next solvent I tried was ethanol. And that's how this looked an hour later. It looks like, I mean, it stained my skin, I guess. It doesn't allow the molecule in through the skin. Like it just, literally, you can just wash it away with water. I think I'm just turning into a Simpson at this point. Oh. <laughs> Still not transparent, just yellow. Just yellow. Now putting my fingers back under the light, the non-orange finger looks the exact same as the dyed one. So that's basically no result. It, it's just a finger that's got yellow shit on it. Okay, maybe human skin isn't as thin as mouse skin. So if I have any chance at making this work, I have to test it where the thinnest skin is on the human body, the eyelid. Not the most comfortable area. Okay, so I've also looked at material safety data sheets. It says it has no effect on the eyes. There's no carcinogenicity or anything like that. Basically just colored water. So I started applying it to my eyelid and I gotta admit, it was difficult to tell if it was doing anything at all. And the longer I did this for, the more messy things got. It just feels like water on my eyelid. Oh, okay, it just got in my eye for sure. Everything's turning orange. <laughs> oh, that's freaky. My vision's like different now. Oh, no, it's fine again. I was kind of hoping I would be able to like see through my eyelid. I thought that would be cool to have like a transparent eyelid that I can close my eyes and still see through. You're like I can't, I can't see how many fingers I'm holding up. Like it's. The problem is that I needed to massage this on my eyelid for at least 30 minutes. It's not really doing much. So I decided to do something dumb. I put a little bit on the inside of my eyelid, thinking it would absorb easier on the inside. Oh, yeah. Now I'm, cr now I'm tearing up. <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah, I'm, I'm crying orange tears now. <laughs> crying Fanta. Not gonna be doing that again. I think I gotta call it quits. But then I was bored and started painting my eyeball. It looks kind of freaky. What a dumb experiment. Didn't even work. One shower trip later, and you can see it's definitely slightly stained itself in, but most of it washed right off. All my results so far really makes me question the legitimacy of the original paper. So far, the withdrawn paper that disputed it has been a lot more helpful in explaining why my tests aren't working. If you look at their new abstract explaining why it was withdrawn, they say it's because one of the conclusions were wrong. The authors detected tartrazine only in the stratum corneum of the skin, where only dead cells are present. However, with tips kindly provided by the original authors of the first paper on the subject, which I think was honestly dumb because their tips was basically just extra information not written in the original paper while they pretend like it was, I, I couldn't find it. And their tip basically led to their new conclusion that mechanical damage to the SC barrier is critical for successful clearing, which I think we've confirmed is probably accurate at this point. Damn it. So that means the tartrazine in my pastilles antidote waifu energy drink won't turn me invisible. At least I can say it tastes really good though. And they go on to say that they are worried about toxicity with that procedure, which is, you know, it's fair enough because while tartrazine isn't known to affect the skin, that's probably gonna be different after you purposely damage the skin barrier. So unfortunately, because I don't want to damage my skin or find out what tartrazine does to a non-functioning skin barrier, I cannot continue these tests. But I can say that this withdrawn paper has been helpful. The only thing I don't like about this paper is that the title can be misinterpreted. Claiming tartrazine cannot make live tissues transparent is a rather bold and just incorrect claim. Because they clearly did do this on live tissues, it just requires some undisclosed tricks. 
I have a Discord that you can join and talk to other science enthusiasts, or possibly even me. You can join by becoming a Patreon member, linked in the description. Thank you to all who are supporters of these videos, they take a lot of time and effort, and I appreciate you all sticking around. Oh, and if you want to learn more about how Tartrazine actually does this stuff, I've linked both of the papers in the description below. I hope you liked this video, and see you next time.